Yeah, as I mentioned on Saturday after the game um, and after reviewing the tape, as I said, you know, um, was disappointed in our consistency and how we execute. Um, and, and that continues to be kind of the, our Achilles heel is just getting the consistency out of our team and out of our players. And as I've said before, it's, it's up to us as coaches and myself as the leader to, to find a way to get the consistency where we want it to be. Um, you know, I thought our effort was there. Um, you know, we're halfway through our regular season and we sit at three and three. And as I told our team yesterday, uh, you know, we still have a lot of football to play. And uh, as we continue to develop as a program, and you know, we won't be defined by how we've played in the past. We'll be defined by what we do moving forward. And that's really important for us is that each day we come out that we work and strive to be the best version that we can be today. And, you know, our guys have continued to come to work with the right kind of attitudes. Uh, with the right mentality and now you know as a coaching staff we've got to get the consistency out of this bunch and and we will do that um, it's great to be able to come back home this weekend in the shell where we play Indiana uh, another opportunity for us um, to, him, to to go out and, and have an opportunity to play with the kind of consistency that we know we're capable of as we've shown we've had games where we've played really well but we've also had the opposite of that and it's important you know, as, as, we, as we talk as a program to understand when we play well, why we do, and it's important to try to duplicate that. And so that's kind of the things we've talked about. Um, from an injury standpoint, you know, Tino Ellis uh, is uh, out for the year. Um, he has an upper body injury. Uh, we expect the full recovery from him from the injury, but it, he'll, he'll be done for the season for us. And Tino's leadership has been uh, uh, great for us. And we'll continue to utilize him as one of the leaders of our team, even though he won't be playing uh, anymore. Um, you know, it's family weekend this weekend in College Park. Uh, we also are uh, bringing back a, a, a another coaching legend here in, in Bobby Ross in the 1984 team that will be honored uh, this Saturday. So it's always great to bring back uh, family uh, to our program and to the university. And we're excited about being able to go out and put on a great show for our, uh, our, our alumni and our families as they come visit us here. Um, and lastly, you know, I want to share the captains for this week. Uh, there will be uh, Antoine Richardson will serve as a game captain, even though he's been injured most of the year. His leadership off the field and the way he's embraced uh, the leadership role, even though he's injured, has been uh, second to none. Um, we're also going to have uh, Tyrell Pigram serve as one of our game captains this week. Uh, the way he competed last week, I was really impressed, and I also like the leadership he showed. And then uh, Chance Campbell will also serve as a game captain. So with that, I'll open it up to any questions. This is Mason Miner. Listen to the Young Terps podcast on CapitalSportsBlog.com and TerpTalk.com, the number one rated Maryland sports podcast. If you've been hurt in a truck crash, call the Jackledge Law Group. We have decades of experience handling truck crashes. We recognize issues unique to trucks, including black box findings and DOT regulations. We find insurance others don't know exists. Some think the only coverage is with the truck, yet we've found millions more insurance with the broker. It's important to collect information and find representation immediately. Truck cases are complex. If you've been hurt in a truck crash, call 855-BIG-DOG-1 right now. Coach says so specifically the defense. So what went wrong? They they went right three to really more than 500 yards, a lot of touchdowns. Um, you know, uns un I guess a surprising performance by you guys. Well, yeah. One, um, you know, when we started the game, obviously uh, with the, 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 the factors of the wind came into play and they were down on our side. We never were able to flip the field position offensively which typically if you get the ball in favorable field position, there's a higher opportunity to score. We didn't play great team defense. Um, we missed a lot of tackles. We had high, our highest number of missed tackles in this game. Um, we didn't play with the energy that our defense has played with throughout the course of it. Um, you know, we've got obviously some new people playing, but again, as we say, if you're you know good enough, you're old enough. And so, you know, we just got to find a consistency there. That's the part that really, you know, I've tried to drive home is that, you know, there's times where we play really, really good on defense, and then there's games where we've looked really, really bad, and we've got to uh, get rid of the, the inconsistency and in how we approach it, the mentality. But, yeah, I agree. I didn't think we played very good defense. We weren't great tackling in space. People have kind of put us in, in positions where they've created 
us in space, and we typically have won those battles, but Saturday we didn't. Coach, you mentioned how you primarily use man defense on the man coverage on front defense, but with Tino out, do you consider switching to more zone, or, or maybe after what Purdue did, do you try to add more zone schemes? To well, we're going to continue to attack. I mean, um, we're, we're, we've got to play aggressive on front. We're not a, a big uh, interior defensive line group, so to sit back and, and play zone coverage and not now you allow the run, and we're not going to get beat with teams running the ball. I mean, that's to me the quickest way to get beat is to allow people to run the ball. Now, when we go back and watch the tape, the teams that have had success throwing the ball against us have taken advantage of some opportunities. And I mean, again, and, and we don't make excuses. We had 33, Deont Deontay Banks played a, the whole game, started for us, and then Gator wound up playing three quarters of the game. Two true freshmen that I was really, really impressed with how those guys competed. I mean, we were getting beat with slants, which are fundamental issues that will get cleaned up and will get fixed. And I think the more experience those guys get, the better we'll be. You know, one of the things people have done to us to kind of negate the Antoine Brooks effect is they've kind of spread us out. And now he's not close to the box where he has been able to, to create a lot of issues for people on, on offense. And so we're, we're making some adjustments there to help uh, keep Tuan involved in the game. Uh, when you look at Anthony's last few weeks, I'm sure it hasn't been as productive as he would like or as you guys would like. How, how much of that do you feel like is attributable to um, him getting banged up and injured, or is there an effort to maybe think he needs some more carries? I mean, he's hurt. I mean, he has a high ankle sprain. And, you know, if you look at the game, we played him early in the game, and uh, he got caught from inside out by an inside linebacker, which never ha happens to Anthony McFarland. The guy is trying to give us everything he has, but uh, right now with the high ankle sprain, we had an MRI on it this week to take a look. It is a high ankle sprain, and one of the things with it you know, he hasn't been able to practice, and that's one of the things that we've said. I mean, to be able to play the way you're capable of playing, you need to practice. You know, he had the unfortunate drop in the end zone, which is another uncharacteristic thing of Anthony McFarland. But to me, that's a byproduct of a guy that hasn't been able to practice the last three, four weeks. And it's frustrating for him. Um, we're taking him day to day. We've tried to allow him to, to heal and, and get healthy, and we're going to try that again this week. And, and We'll see how he feels up going into the game, but it's been frustrating for Ant. But he's been—it's uh, not for him not wanting to and not trying. So uh, his lack of production is a direct correlation to the high ankle sprain. For, for this week, is he just day to day? He's day to day. I mean, we've done that all the last four weeks. We've been day to day with him, and there are good days and bad days. And we had some of the swelling out. And we'll see how he feels on Saturday. To your right, Dave. Coach, Indiana's been able to put some points on the board the last three weeks. What do they do from a scheme standpoint that makes them special, and what sort of challenges will they put on your defense this Saturday? Yeah, it starts with their quarterback. You know, Penix is a, a lefty that you know I'm very familiar with, having recruited him some. Um, the, the offense goes through him. They, they do a lot of the RPO stuff that we're all doing in college football. They've got a big back that's a, a little bigger than the backs we faced the last few weeks that was a downhill runner. Uh, a hard tackle that we've got to do a good job of being really physical and playing with great leverage and wrapping them up to get them on the ground, which we didn't do a great job of last week. And then, you know, they've got a couple of receivers out there that, uh, that have opportunities that have made a lot of plays the last few weeks. So for us, again, it's affecting the quarterback. It starts with stopping the run and then trying to get pressure on the young quarterback to, to get him off his spot and not allow him just to sit back there and, and, and pick us apart. Coach, um, Indiana's defense has also been playing a lot better as of late. They have some playmakers in the in the front seven there. Um, I think they had something like 11 or 14 tackles for losses against um, Rutgers in their last game. With you know the, the injuries that you've had on the offensive line, kind of tuning guys in and out, how do you uh, pull them together for, for this week to stop the penetration that Indiana's going to get? Yeah, I mean, we've got to have these guys prepared to play. Um, you know, Indiana poses a different kind of challenge than what we've maybe seen the last few weeks in that their interior guys are really big guys at 320 pounds, 330 pound guys in the interior, which means we've got to play with great pad level and, and match the physicality on the inside to be able to get our running game going, which we weren't able to necessarily do last week uh, other than minus the quarterback run. So um, we're getting some guys back healthy. Um, you know, Marcus Minor practiced yesterday. Our expectation is he'll play this week. 
Uh, we're starting to get Terrence Davis uh, working back into it. I don't know if he'll be available this week. Uh, obviously, Johnny Jordan played the whole game, and so and then we've been able to develop some depth with guys like Austin Fontaine and Spencer Anderson, who played a lot of football. And I think what you'll see up front is that the more these guys play, the better they'll get as the season goes along. And so we'll continue to put together a plan and, and schemes to to maybe not put them in situations to have to be at the point of attack or or have to be the the, the reason that the play works, which we were able to do some last week by getting the ball out in space. But uh, I like the way those guys are to coming together, and it's good to be able to get some healthy guys back up front. Third row, center, done. And Mike, uh, Javon came out of the game at some point uh, in the second half, I guess it was, and had his ankle wrap. Uh, what, what's his status, and, and what kind of pressure does that put on on uh, Pig if, if his main uh, you know, guys are not, you know, running backs are not healthy? Yeah, Javon is healthy. He, he got a, a contusion uh, on, his, on his shin, basically. Um, he's practiced. He practiced yesterday. He'll be 100% for the game. You know, the only the issue that we found, and this is something just even, you know, we're a team that has pretty good team speed. And I thought Saturday we didn't play as fast or even close to the speed that we played against Rutgers and some of the other people. And, and what it is is a point of diminishing returns because you look when Ant can't take a bunch of reps and we've lost the – you know, Lolo and, and Jake Funk, now you've got Javon Leak and, and, and uh, Tayon Fleet Davis taking the brunt of the work in practice. And you, wanna, you want these guys fresh for the game. So we've tried to adjust some of the things we've done um, practice-wise to take some reps off of these guys because, you know, I, we had a screen in the game on Saturday where Javon was out in the open area. And, I mean, that guy never gets caught. And he just did not have the, the giddy up that he typically plays with. And so we've done some things and we're, we're doing some things from a recovery standpoint to make sure that our speed guys can play fast on Saturday, including like a Dante Demas. To your right wing. I've got a two part. Uh, can you talk about Dante Demas becoming the number one guy? And what are the teams doing to take away the tight end? Um, Dante Demas is not the number one guy. We don't have number one. He's a guy that we want to get the ball to, but going into every game, we want to make sure that we're distributing the ball to our different playmakers. And he has by far been a great, uh, a great playmaker for us. But we've got some other guys that have made some plays as well. And you know, from the uh, the tight end standpoint, I don't know if they've done as much to to stop the tight ends as much as we've tried to do some things to get the ball out in space, where we've asked our tight ends to do other things besides being route runners, to get the goal, to be able to get the ball on the perimeter, your tight ends now have got to become blockers for you. And they've done, if you look at the touchdown run Piggy had, you saw 81 blocking two guys down the field. And so we've asked them to do some different things because of some of the pieces we're missing on the offensive line and being able to, to throw the ball and do some of the other things we've done earlier in the year. But now getting some guys healthy back, our goal is to always try to have our offense, our tight ends involved in the offense. I mean, two weeks ago, she had caught a few balls, maybe caught some balls against Rutgers, so they maybe weren't as involved this week, but they're always part of our plan. Time for a few more to the right. Coach, as a teenager in the 80s following the Bobby Ross teams, what did those teams mean to you as a fan, as somebody who was getting into football? I mean, that was to me the, the, the golden years of, of Maryland football in terms of those three straight ACC titles. and. You know, I've always been a huge fan of Coach Ross and the style of play. Obviously, the thing that comes to mind when you think of those teams are the quarterbacks uh, that, that have come through the system here. And, and, you know, again, when I took this job, the vision I have and the type of job that Maryland can be is a direct correlation to what I grew up watching in, in, in the mid-'80s, having an opportunity to see the success this place had. That's what drives me. That's what uh, – makes me know that if it's been done before, you can do it again, and, and my goal is to find a way to get it done again. Last one, uh, Mike, you talked about uh, teams taking Antoine out of his game. When he is not doing the things that he has you know, been so productive, is it hard for him to stay focused mentally in the game because he, he's, so, he's such an aggressive player? Do you find that sometimes, maybe there are times where he's sort of not, not playing the way he normally can play, just yeah, I, I don't necessarily know if he loses his focus or not. Um, you know, when people spread you out, and, and we've been playing Antoine more at safety, and when they spread you out, it puts him basically in man-to-man -man coverage, which takes him away from 
being able to stop the run. And so what we've had to do and what we're going to do is do some things to allow Antoine to be closer to the box as well and still be involved in playing coverage, but maybe instead of on a slot receiver, it's on a tight end. And, and now that has him tighter to the box, which allows him to still be a blitzer for us, which he does so well. Uh, added number into the run game, which, you know, the last two weeks, I think people have tried to spread us out on defense and it's put Twan outside the hashes to where if they're not throwing the ball there or the ball's not coming to that side, he's probably not as productive, but he's played as hard and has done a tremendous job for us still with his leadership. But we, we recognize what people are doing, and so we have to make adjustments. And I think you'll see him a lot more active in this week's game. Thanks, Coach. Thanks. Appreciate everyone's patience with us.